of the two, and yes, I just said two, launch games for the PC Engine CD, Fighting Street is the only real game based on a classic definition. You may know Fighting Street better by its original name, Street Fighter, which was changed by NEC when it decided to publish the game instead of Capcom. Of course, most of us are more familiar with the extremely popular sequel, Street Fighter 2, and I even remember back then wondering what the heck Street Fighter was and when it had come out. It turns out it was an arcade game from 1987 that apparently released in the US arcades, but I never saw it in the Chicagoland area. When you first gaze upon Street Fighter, you'll notice all of the building blocks that made up the beloved sequel are there. This includes the best of three fights, the life bars, the plane flight sequence, the eight major fighters, as well as two bosses across the world, and even includes some familiar faces. Ryu is the main protagonist, but if you play in two player, it's possible to control Ken as well, with the victor continuing through the campaign. There are even the super moves, most of which will be unfamiliar due to the exclusivity of most of these characters, but Ryu and Ken are capable of the fireball, the dragon punch, and the hurricane kick, just like in the sequel. This PC Engine CD port is the only true home console version of the game, but there were a handful of microcomputer ports that didn't quite capture the arcade game's look or feel. On the other hand, Fighting Street is a relatively faithful port from a sound and visual standpoint. The PC Engine's large sprite options allowed each character to be scaled properly when compared to the arcade, and each level's unique background can be seen with almost as much clarity as the arcade version. Sure, a few scrolling effects and finer points don't make the cut, but for 1988, this is a decent looking title for the PC Engine. The sound has the same treatment, only with a mixed outcome. Each song is remastered in Redbook Audio and sounds crisp and vibrant coming out of your speakers during each match. It's when those matches end that you discover the voices weren't given the same care and sound like they are in the direct captures from the arcade game. Back in the 80s, if you had sound in your arcade game, it would usually be a basic synthesized emulation of a voice, with the best English-speaking Japanese guy in the office saying the line. Street Fighter obviously did this as well, and Fighting Street on the PC Engine CD brought it directly over. You've got a lot to run before you beat me, Try again, kid. <laughs> What is being said is almost completely indistinguishable, if not for the subtitles provided by the game. Up to this point, it looks like Fighting Street may be a worthwhile title, especially with its release on Virtual Console, but one major issue ruins the experience across the board. Street Fighter in the arcade contained two pads that could detect how light or strong you were pushing down the buttons, and used as the input to define the strength of your attack. A later version of the arcade game apparently switched to the traditional six-button control scheme we are familiar with, but no six-button controllers existed when this game released to Holmes. Fighting Street tries to accomplish this same task on the PC Engine controller by defining the strength on how long you hold the button down. This in and of itself would be manageable were it not for the hideous response of the controls. Your moves get delayed, don't register properly or just plain don't work at all to the point that the simple input like holding back to block is not a sure thing. This is so important when you consider the biggest factor of the sequel, Street Fighter 2, were the tight and responsive controls that had precision timing of some players down to the frame. Fighting Street on the other hand is clunky and half the time your Ryu or Ken look like they are parading around the field with no clear direction and possibly not even aware their goal is to defeat the guy in front of them. Couple that with the special moves and a large amount of damage each enemy doles out, and it's nothing shy of a crash course in masochism. Those special moves mentioned in the beginning are impossible on the PC Engine controller, and I had to utilize cheats just to get enough examples for this video. I only had like 1 in 10 attempts connect on the console proper, and none worked via emulation. I know you're probably wondering if this is just the emulator, but I tested the US version and Japanese version on an actual PC Engine Duo, as well as trying it out on both the emulator and the Wii Virtual Console. The clumsy controls are consistent across all platforms, to the point that I can only conclude this is in the game proper. With controls that feel a bit like playing an arcade fighting game with boxing gloves on, Fighting Street on PC Engine feels more akin to Data East's 1984 arcade title Karate Champ than it does the infamous sequel it spawned. In addition, I feel this game doesn't benefit much from being a CD title, because aside from the Red Book audio for the soundtrack, there isn't anything here that the PC Engine isn't capable of, 
and it could probably play the original arcade tracks faithfully. That said, it's still a notable title for building the foundation of what is probably the genesis of the fighting genre, and also the only true launch title for the PC Engine CD. Being published by NEC means that this is one of the few games of the PC Engine CD that made the coveted trip to the West onto the Turbo CD as well. But it's probably not a great example of what Americans yearn for in their new $400 CD add-on.